It's not because of you. It's because of Jesus. It's not because of your goodness. It's because of His. The Bible says that a tree of life is a dream fulfilled. If you believe Jesus is God and you believe He rose from the dead, you're going to heaven. There's nothing you can do to make God love you any less. He loves you. My name is Ben Conway. I'm the lead pastor of Tree of Life Church in Dagenham, Essex. I'm also the founder of the Tree of Life Family, which is a growing network of growing churches. And today what I want to speak about is really what makes Tree of Life Church distinctive. That's a very awkward conversation to have. Some of you are watching this program in a Tree of Life meeting. Uh, some of these programs have been recorded for Tree of Life to train our people, to welcome new people. Um, but others of you will be watching this as a whole. I'm, I'm not here to say we're better than any other church church and I wouldn't say that people who want to join our church we might be better for them to be in than another church but other churches will be better for other people to be part of and I don't think churches should be in competition with one another I don't believe that at all I believe one of the worst things that we see is this selfish ambition from pastors we get upset if someone plants a church close to us we get upset if we think people are taking our people but what if those people are better off there let them go bless them and send them and let them go I want what's best for those people not what's best for me and that, that really really should be an attitude of anyone who wants to serve and lead in the kingdom of God. But as it is, uh, different churches have different distinctives, they have different ways of doing things. And I really believe in the dream. I believe everyone should have a dream. I believe that everyone should dream big. Uh, part of my ministry is inspiring people to dream big and challenging them to live the dream. But I also believe with all my heart that um, culture matters more than the dream. Dream is our destination, let's say. It's where we're going. You know, when you get in the taxi and you say, that's where we're going. That's your dream. You know, our dream is to have a mega church in Dagenham. Our dream is that no one in the UK should be more than an hour's drive from a Tree of Life church. Our dream is that we're going to plant churches across the world. That's our dream. That's where we're going. But wouldn't it be terrible if you, that taxi took you to your destination and then when you got there, you forgot who you were and you weren't the same person. You were a different person, a person you didn't like, a person you didn't respect. And so culture is who we are. Culture is who we are when we are together. And I believe that anyone who's involved in church leadership should have a culture. Every church should have a culture. I believe every church has a culture. Some are explicit, some are secret. I believe in being as explicit as possible. I believe in telling people what the culture is. And I want to talk a little bit about the culture at Tree of Life Church. Some of it at the start might be a little bit about doctrine, what we believe from the Bible, but really it's about how we do things. And what this will do to help you is it'll help you understand if you want to be part of Tree of Life Church, but also if you're watching, you're sitting here watching this on your TV, you don't live anywhere near a Tree of Life Church, you're not interested in Tree of Life Church, you're happy in your church, it'll help you think about church culture. It'll help you think about how your church does things. And it'll help you think about how you can help pull in the same direction as your church. How many of you know church works better when we pull in the same direction? You know, fellowship is the fellows we have in our ship. And if everyone's rowing at a different speed in a different direction, that ship's going to go around in circles. And some of you have been in churches where that's been the case. But we're going to row together. We're going to row simultaneously. We're going to row in harmony. We're going to row in synergy. And we're going to make it to where we're going. We're going to move forward. So what's one of our big distinctives? Well, the first thing is we are unashamedly Pentecostal. I believe that God is here right now. I believe that when we have our services, whether it's a few people meeting in a living church in someone's house on a Tuesday night, or whether it's a Sunday morning and there's hundreds of people there, I believe God is there. I believe he's there because we brought him there. I don't believe we need to pray 10 fast songs and five slow songs to suddenly feel like God's there and God then go, oh, I think I'll visit that church today. No, God's there from the moment the service starts. And that affects how we do things. In our church, um, in our larger service, in a small gathering, it's harder to do, but in any of our gatherings about 70 or 80 people, we start with a five-minute countdown, and when that reaches zero, we cheer, we stomp, we make some noise. Why? Because God is there from the start, so we're going to be excited from the start. And so you could be in a Tree of Life service, and someone might give a message in tongues. Someone might speak in tongues. Someone else will give the interpretation of that. Sometimes we just all worship together in tongues, and there's not an interpretation when we do that. Because, oh, it should be an interpretation. No, there shouldn't. No, we're not talking to you. When God is using tongues to 
to talk to the church, there needs to be interpretation. The church needs to understand. But when we're all talking to God, we're all praying in tongues rather than messaging in tongues. And there is a thing as praying in tongues. We pray in the Spirit. We're talking to God. And God doesn't need a translation. We just all worship together. And that's some of those beautiful times when we worship together in the Spirit. And uh, people are changed. People get visions. People get set free. Why? Because God is there. He's there from the very start of every service. He's there because the people who went into the room have God inside them. I believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I believe in Acts 2 verse 4. They were filled with the Spirit and they spoke in tongues. I believe every Christian should be filled in the Spirit. I believe every Christian should speak in tongues. I believe that's part of our foundation. And that's actually one of our four pillars at Tree of Life. Our four pillars are filled with the Word, filled with the Spirit, filled with the nations and filled with love. We'll talk about those as the program goes forward. You know, you might get a prophetic word in the church service. Someone might give a word to encourage you, inspire you, not to give you direction. And that comes from the Bible and your walk with God. But it can be encouraged, you can be blessed, you can get a word that just builds you up. We, 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 we see people healed. Most Sundays we see people healed. Uh, someone got healed just last Sunday. And I probably could, no matter when I'm in the recording studio, I could probably say that someone got healed last Sunday. And if it didn't happen in Dagnum, it probably happened in Guildford or Brentwood or Watford or Groydon. People are getting healed at Tree of Life because we believe in healing. We preach healing. We believe that by the stripes of Jesus uh, we're healed. And so that sometimes makes us a bit distinctive from other churches and other places, but you have to be ready for the supernatural. It's part of our experience as Christians. You should be experiencing the supernatural. Every one of us should. The second thing that really makes us sort of stand out is we believe that God is a good God. I really believe that God is good. And I know that everyone pays lip service to that. God is good. But some people, when they say God is good, don't mean good the way I mean good. They mean God is good. And then, then they'll tell you that, you know, a two-year-old girl gets killed in a hurricane. So God did that. God did not do that because God's good. And I don't believe God is behind the evil in the world. I believe the devil is. Uh, oh, you're saying God's not in control of this world. That's right. I'm saying that. God's not in control of this world. God gave control to humanity and humanity took control and we did a very bad job. If you want to know what somewhere looks like where God kept control, look at heaven. It's a beautiful place. The streets are paved with gold. There's no fighting. There's no wars. No one gets stabbed. No one gets shot. No one gets divorced. No one has a fight. It's beautiful. You never have to watch soap operas up there either because the beautiful place where nobody has evil imaginations or evil thoughts. It's a wonderful, beautiful place. And heaven should be like that. We say, God, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, because we know this is not God's will. We know it's not God's will when someone's raped or murdered or tortured or hurt or wars and pain. And even when someone dies, it's not God's will, especially if someone dies young. You know, that's not God's will for a child to die before their parents. That's never God's will. You know, these things happen, I agree, but it's not the will of God. We need to start praying that the will of God would be done when you start believing that God is good. Beloved, 3 John verse 2, Beloved, I wish, I pray above all things that you would prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. That's God's will for your life, that you prosper, you succeed, you make it. That's financially, socially, emotionally, and you be in health. That's physical prosperity. It's your body's healthy even as your soul prospers. The way you think increases. The way you think is blessed. The way you think is big. When you change the way you think, good things start to come your way. And so we believe in the goodness of God at Tree of Life, and I believe you should believe in the goodness of God. God is a good God. In fact, you know, we believe we're redeemed from the curse of the Lord. Galatians chapter 3, verse 13 and 14 says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the Lord. Deuteronomy 28 tells us that in the curse of the Lord there's sickness, poverty, mildew, all the stuff that's death being defeated, all of that you're set free from because of Jesus Christ's work on the cross. And now you're blessed. Now you're, maybe, maybe, I, don't look, I don't look very blessed. Well, we'll teach you how to believe and how to receive that blessing. We'll teach you how to walk in that blessing. Really, it's by faith. you just got to start believing that you are blessed. you got to start declaring you are blessed. And so that's why one of the things we do at our church is, is we make sure that every day, every time you come to a service, there are declarations. There are things to say. Uh, uh, in a year of fruitfulness, we say, I'm more fruitful than ever before. And we all say that over our own lives because words have power. And when we start speaking words, we start to manifest and attract the goodness of God. Whenever we take the offering, we start speaking. We say, thank you, God. I always have more in my pockets than I think. And, you know, with the amount of testimonies I've heard in my life where people come and go, I had more in my pockets than I thought. I got a pay rise I didn't expect. I got a promotion I didn't expect. God wants us to increase. God is a good God. And we're a grace church. We're unashamedly a church that believes in grace. God's goodness does not come to us because of our merit, because of our goodness, because of our greatness. It comes because of his goodness and his greatness. It's all about Jesus. Amen. And so I want to go through 
Uh, we have seven cultural statements at Tree of Life. And again, if you're not thinking to become Tree of Life, you're watching this on your TV, think about your church culture. How can you encapsulate it? How can you speak it? Maybe there's other pastors and leaders watching this. You say, look, I want you to be able to speak out your culture and teach your people what the culture is because then you create a safe place. You create a place where this is who we are. And then when you walk in the middle of your dream, you haven't suddenly found out you built a church, you know, a mile wide and an inch deep, but your people have become disciples. Your people are followers of Jesus. Your people are following Jesus. And so I want you to think about the culture even you have for your family, the culture you have for yourself. What's your personal culture? What do you do when no one's looking? Who are you? And the culture of Tree of Life is who Tree of Life is when we're together. The culture of your family is who your family is when that's together. The culture, your personal culture is who you are when no one's around, when no one's looking. And you need to develop a culture. You need to say on, on purpose, when, I, when no one's around, what do I do? What do I do when my wife's away and my kids are away? What do I do? I, I, you know, I, I know I don't look as healthy as I should. I've lost a lot of weight recently. I've lost uh, well over 100 pounds, well over eight stone. And in people, my goodness, I've still got a long way to go. I know I do. But when, when my wife's away, my kids are away, I'll go down the gym and I'll go on the cross walker and the cross trainer and I'll lift heavy weights and I'll work out. Why? Because that's my culture, is I want to be healthy, I want to be strong. You know, that's my personal culture. I'll spend time praying in tongues and building myself up in the spirit. That's my culture. If you get me in the car and there's no one else in the car, I guarantee you I'll be speaking in tongues because that's my personal culture to build myself up by my most holy faith. And so you need to develop a culture. But as a pastor, a part of my calling, part of my leadership, job and you read the way Paul wrote to Timothy and Titus about choosing leaders, about choosing, setting a culture for everyone, a way that everyone can behave, a way that people know how to behave in the house of God. So at Tree of Life we have seven cultural statements and um, here they are here. The first of these, everyone in Tree of Life knows this first one, full of the word, full of the spirit, full of the nations, filled with love. We know that because Chris and Vaughn put it to a beautiful song. And I'm not going to sing it to you because that would just embarrass me, but um, trust me, there's a song and it's beautiful. Full of the word, full of the spirit, full of the nations, filled with love. And that's part of what we're trying to do. We actually call it the four pillars of Tree of Life. And um, every church has things that it values, things that it holds dear. Whether the church is articulating them is a different matter, it should always be articulated. I'm very deliberate about what I like and what the church should be like, and I want to try and make our priorities very clear. And so fill of the word means I want everyone in the church of Jesus Christ to know what God's word says on every issue. And that we believe the word of God above every other source of information. People will then call us word faith people. Sometimes if you want to insult us, they'll say, oh, you'll just name it, claim it people, or blab it, grab it people. But we, it just means we believe the word of God. When the circumstances say this, but the word of God says that, we believe the word. When the circumstances say we're sick, but the word says we're healed, we believe the word. When the circumstances say we're not going to make it financially, but the word of God says, my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory, we believe the word. We believe the report of Jesus Christ in the word of God above every other report. God is true and everyone else, anyone that contradicts God is lying to us. And that's whether it's circumstances, other people, anything. God is true and every man's a liar. We believe that God's a good God and that God will prosper you and God will help you. I believe that the moment you become a Christian, you become right with God. The Bible says we are made right with God. And so that's what I believe. I believe I'm right with God. Uh, sometimes I don't look right with God. Sometimes I don't act like I'm right with God. Sometimes I don't sound like I'm right with God. Some days I get up and I don't feel like I'm right with God. But none of that matters. The Word says I'm right with God. And that's the truth. The truth is what God's Word says. That's what it means to be full of the Word. God is never trying to harm me. He's already blessed me with every spiritual blessing. According to First Peter 1 verse 3, he's given me everything I need for life and godliness. Everything I need. According to Ephesians 1 3, I'm blessed with every spiritual blessing. And the Bible teaches very clearly, and I believe the Bible, I'm full of the word, that I'm redeemed from sin, redeemed from sickness, redeemed from poverty. You can read that yourself, Galatians 3 13, Isaiah 53, 1 Peter 2 24. And the will of God for my life is that I walk in victory and righteousness and health and wealth and abundance and blessing. And how do I get the faith to believe that? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, Romans 10, 17. And when I hear the word and speak the word, that builds up my faith. Only by being a person of faith can we please God, Hebrews 11, 6. And only by faith can we walk in victory, 1 Peter 5, verse 4. And so we at Tree of Life, we try and teach faith as often as we can. And in fact, we try and have a faith month every year. And we just say, right, for this month, we're just going to teach how to use faith, how to operate in faith, how to use that faith. And um, I believe everything we teach is lined up work God's word and the truth that God is good and that what God's word says over everything else. That's what it means to be filled with the word. Then we come to fill of the spirit. 
I believe every Christian should be filled with the Spirit, should be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Be filled with the Spirit. It's a biblical command, Ephesians 5.18. In Acts 2, it says they were all filled with the Spirit. It wasn't just Peter got filled and then he lay hands on them. They all got filled, a tongue for every head, and they all spoke in tongues, and I believe every Christian should speak in tongues. I believe that God wants you to speak in tongues, and I believe that you need to know that, that God wants everyone to speak in tongues. That's what church should be like. Everyone flows in the Spirit. Everyone is full of the Spirit. Everyone can be led by the Spirit. Everyone can operate in all the gifts of the Spirit as the Spirit wills. Everyone can speak by the Spirit as the Spirit gives them utterance. And so, man, when you start to know the Holy Spirit, life is the greatest adventure on earth. It's amazing. I do not accept for one second that the ministry and power of the Holy Spirit is not for today. And I do not accept for one second that the ministry and power of the Spirit is just for the clergy and just for the pastors. And it's not even just for the church meetings. It's for every Christian at all times. You can use the gifts of the Spirit in your office. You can use them in school, in college. You can use them on the street while you're shopping. You can use them anywhere. And I want to train every Christian. My dream is to train and teach every Christian how to relate to the Holy Spirit in a dynamic way that gives them life, changes their life. And, um, you know, I teach on the Holy Spirit every, one month every year. I'd say, well, I'm teaching the Holy Spirit. Who's the Holy Spirit? What are the gifts of Spirit? How to work in the gifts? How to flow in the gifts? How to pray in tongues and get results? How to prophesy? And you can teach how to flow in the Spirit. You can't make the gifts appear. You can't make things manifest. But the Holy Spirit can manifest and people can quench Him because of their ignorance. The Holy Spirit can try and flow, but people cannot yield to Him and not give Him the liberty He needs. And so I want to teach everyone how to flow in that liberty. And I believe that God wants you to be part of a fellowship that challenges you to live a life with the Holy Spirit and uh, supernatural adventure and spiritual fullness. And if you're sitting here right now and say, that's how I want to live my life, well, well, maybe Tree of Life is the church for you. Uh, maybe there's another church near you you need to be part of. But maybe this is the church for you. Maybe this is something that can help you. And I want you to have a vision of a church where everyone's full of the Spirit, where everyone's speaking in tongues, where everyone's ministering, especially in small groups, full of the nations. You know, Tree of Life is in Dagenham. Dagenham's in Essex, but it's also in London. It's very much in London. Um, you know, we, we vote for the London Mayor. We're part of the Met Police. It's a London telephone number. And so London is the most international city on the planet. And I, I believe, I, I, I'm so honored. I feel it's such a privilege that God's asked me to plant a church in London. I really do believe that. And it's my desire and my goal that Tree of Life Church reflects London and is truly a multi-ethnic church. And right now, we have well over 30 nationalities every weekend. And that's just awesome. And I don't just want people to come from different ethnic groups. I want people to come and enhance and teach and help one another from their perspective, from their background, from their culture. And we can learn from each other's culture, strengths and attributes. And of course, eat each other's food. Amen. Um, but we want a mingling of cultures where we don't lose any culture. And um, there's no tension. There's no pride. But we just bless and encourage each other. Jesus said, my house shall be a house of prayer for all nations. That the Greek word for nations there is ethnos. It's where we get the word ethnic from. We believe the church that does not have people from different ethnic groups praying together is not the church Jesus built. He said, oh, my church to be a house of prayer for all the ethnos, all the ethnicities, all the different tribes and cultures, all the different backgrounds. And so all that Tree of Life church is a multi-ethnic, multicultural. It's been a miracle how God's worked it out. And uh, so, you know, we, we have our services in English so that people from all over London can participate in those services. And I will never divide my church services. I'll never divide my small groups on multi-ethnic lines. I'll never do it. And as the church grows, we're supporting missions all over the world. We're feeding orphans in Burundi. We're helping prostitutes get off the street in Kenya. We, we've, built, we've built a well in Cambodia. We're changing lives across the world. And uh, I believe that by the end of the day, we're going to have 100 nations and 100 languages in Tree of Life. And um, I want you to help me embrace that vision. I want you to help me support that vision. I want you to stand with me. I'm going to stand with you. And we're going to build a multi-ethnic church by welcoming people from every culture, learning about their culture, sharing your culture. Every culture has good things about it and bad things about it. And it's about learning the difference that we live a church with one kingdom culture, but we embrace all the ethnicities. And finally, a church that's full of love. And I've been in many large conferences and large churches where I've just been a spectator. And I don't want people to come to church to be a spectator. You know, you, you go to a football game, there's only 11 people on the pitch, and there's thousands of people. All they do is pay their money and turn up. That's not what church should be. 
In fact, church is often a lot like that, except you can't find 11 people on the pitch. But it's only by doing things that we can show that we love one another. We can't love in word, we have to love in deed. And so how do we build a church full of love? How do you build a church culture that's full of love? You need a structure where we can know people well enough to show love to them. I want every Christian on the planet to be able to give a testimony. This is how I got someone saved. This is how I got someone to get the new birth. This is how I got someone filled with the Spirit. This is when I water baptized someone. This is when I laid hands on the sick and they recovered. This is, I want every Christian to say, church is my family. It's the best place on earth. It's where I'm recognized, where I'm valued. And the only way to ensure that happens is through small groups. We call our small groups living churches because they're alive and because they're churches. There's as much church. What are you doing on a Tuesday or Wednesday or Thursday night in someone's house as it is on a Sunday morning? And so our living, our small groups, our living churches are between four and 15 people, and they meet in a house, normally in a house, and the purpose is to help each other become better Christians. That's the, that's the short version. But it's to share your life, share your dream. They worship together. They pray together. They use the gifts of the Spirit. They serve each other in love. They talk about how to make that sermon on Sunday part of their life. And uh, we train all our leaders and invest in that because that's so important to us. And that's a church full of love. You can't build a church full of love without small groups because you can't love a thousand people. You've got a church of a thousand people, you can't love them all. But you've got ten people in the room, you can love them, you can serve them, you can learn their name, you can miss them when they're not there. So that's our first cultural statement. Our second is we inspire people to dream, but we challenge them to live the dream. So all inspiration, some churches are all inspiration, hype, hype, hype. That's great, but they never challenge you. Other churches pride themselves on being challenged, challenged, challenged. But you need both. We inspire you to dream and we challenge you to live the dream. And so we try and hold those in balance. When I look at my preaching calendar for the year, when I look at the guest speakers we bring in, I try and balance the inspirational with the challenge. And that's important. Number three, we love before we tell the truth, but we always do both. We love before we tell the truth, but we always do truth. Both. Uh, Paul says in Ephesians 4, speak the truth in love. So if the truth is inside the love, then the love should be what people encounter first. You know, if an unmarried couple walks through the door on a Sunday morning, they maybe have a couple of kids and they're living together. The first thing we tell them is, yeah, you should be married. You're living in sin. You're terrible. That shouldn't be the first thing we say. The first thing we say is just love. Love, 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 love. And so at some point, you know, maybe they've been there a few months and the guy goes, you know, I can play the bass guitar, I can play the drums. Could I help with the band? Well, actually, you can't because we value marriage so highly that we only allow married people or single people, we don't allow people living together without making that commitment in our worship band because we think that worshiping God is a very special and holy thing. And now, would you like to get married? Can we help you get married? And so now, because we've loved and loved and loved, we've built a bridge for that truck to travel of course. A lot of Christians are driving trucks across places they've never built a bridge of love. You know, if all you want to do is correct someone, correct someone, correct someone, but you don't want to find out how they're doing, you don't want to celebrate their successes, you don't want to enter into their life and find out how you got there, you don't really love them. And you're not the person God's called to speak the truth to them. We speak the truth in love. You know, if all we have is just love, we just love, 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 then we're just a blob. We're no backbone. And if all we do is speak the truth, speak the truth like a skeleton with no flesh, and that's horrible. You know, just the same way I've tried hugging a skeleton, you know, there's bones everywhere, it's not fun. Uh, if we try and put the truth on the outside, well, then you're like a crab. But God designed for the skeleton to be covered by the flesh. So we love, we always love before we tell the truth, but we do do both. We do get ready to tell the truth at some point, but we build that bridge nice and strong, that bridge of love, before we run the track across it. That's our culture. That's how we are at Tree of Life. And no matter how large we grow, no matter how many churches we plant, we never, ever want to lose sight of that. Number five, every, sorry, number four, every path forward is clear, every problem addressed. I really, I don't want to be a church with skeletons in the closet. I don't want to be a church with sweeping stuff under the carpet. You know, we deal with stuff. If there's a problem, we head it on, we talk about it, we discuss it, we make it right. We do it sweetly, we do it kindly, but we sort stuff out. We don't leave stuff to linger. You know, and that, that's how we deal with each other, self inside the church. I, I, I can't control how people outside the church behave. There are some people, you know, I, I can't address some of their problems. I can't address some of their situations. I just got to move on by because they're not part of my tribe. I'm not part of their tribe. I love them, bless them, say hello to them. But I, you know, unless they give me right, let's just sit down and say, Ben, do you think I'm doing okay? Do you think I can sort myself out here? You know, one of the things that really annoys me as a pastor is unsolicited advice from someone who I'm not sure loves me. And, you know, so, someone who watched this program write a letter because they've watched one program and they think, I've got right to write a letter. They've got no idea what I've done for the last 20 years. No idea how many people I've loved. No idea how many people I've helped. But they'll still write the letter. I don't know. Just, just, I don't. And I, I don't ever want to create that culture and tree of life. And I don't think any of you should be thinking about that kind of culture. You want a culture where we address every problem. I'm talking about the problems inside. So every path forward clear. When someone comes to tree of life, I want to be a leader. Okay, fine, I'm gonna help you be a leader. This is the path you take. First of all, 
watch some courses. Second of all, you know, get involved in a small group. Third of all, start serving. You can't be a leader if you can't make the teas and turn up on time to make the teas. You know, so there's a path. There's always a path. God has a path. And um, at the church at the moment, we're in the stage of making that path more formal. It's easy to be informal when there's an, uh, just a few people. Because you can see and you can spot, but now you're at the size where we can't see everyone, so we have to make that path more formal. Number five, we're a branded house, not a house of brands. What does that mean? We're all pulling together in the same direction. You know, if, if you're a worship duo who come to our church and you've got a band name, that's great, you've got a band name. Go and travel the world with that band name. But when you're playing for Tree of Life family, you're leading worship at Tree of Life. It's Tree of Life worship. We're all pulling in the same direction. We don't have all different brands. We pull in one direction. It's all part of creating that synergy so we can row together. And a lot of people want to brand different things. No, Jesus Jesus was consumed with the house of the Lord, not just the room. And so we build with people consumed. Number six, we're learners for life. That's really important. Then no one knows it all. We're always learning. We're always studying. And not just about academic knowledge, but we're always humble, always open to learning new things. And finally, we think like owners, we act like champions. We think like owners, we act like champions. What I mean by thinking by like an owner, you know, if someone is a tenant in a house, and there's a problem, they call the landlord. Landlord is a problem with the boiler. That's how a lot of people treat me as Pastor, Pastor, this church isn't kind enough. Pastor, this church isn't good enough. Pastor, this church is not doing anything for the homeless. No, you're an owner. How does an owner deal with the problem in the house? They get and fix it. You're part of this church. And if you want to be part of this church and there's a problem, fix it. Don't tell me this church got a little problem. Turn up half an hour early and pick up the litter. You see, that's what an owner mentality is. And we're trying to get that mentality across the whole church. And I'll tell you, if your culture is building a tenant mentality, then the leaders will eventually burn out. You'll get fed up, you'll get bitter, you'll get upset. Build an ownership mentality in people. And so I hope what I've done here is expose our culture, expose what Tree of Life's like, but also helped you think, how do I build a culture in my place? How do I express that culture? How do I build cultural values in a way that people remember them? You know, put them to a song, like I fill of the word song. That um, Everyone knows Tree of Life, fill the word, fill the spirit, fill the nations, fill the love. Everyone knows that because Chris and Vaughn put it to a song. And, you know, some of us might not be able to be put to a song as a challenge if you're watching this Chris and Vaughn but you know these are the things that are going to help everybody the things that are going to help everybody understand and if you want to be part of Tree of Life Church make an intelligent decision because you know what our culture is going to be like so that's the kind of person that I want to be like I want to be a lifelong learner I want to think like an owner I want to love before I tell the truth I want to inspire people to dream I want to challenge people to live the dream and so Make those things clear. Make the fences clear and people won't walk into them accidentally. And so I hope this has helped you today. I want to pray for everyone watching this to down and speak blessings over you. And remember, if you're watching this on TV at home, give us, give us a call, give us an email, get yourself a free CD, okay? Get yourself one of our free CDs. We love getting the Word of God out to people. Share it with your friends. Bless people. Let them know when we're on. Let them know you're watching. Give us a call. Let us know you're watching. Become a dream partner with us. Start investing in this media ministry and start giving every month this media ministry and help us expand and get the Word of God out to as many people as possible. Father, I thank you for everyone listening to the sound of my voice right now. And I just pray that they'd understand culture better than they've ever done, that the spirit of wisdom and revelation would help them understand who they are when they're on their own. Help them build a personal culture. Help them build a family culture and help them build a church culture in the name of Jesus. You know, when you come into church on Sunday, don't be uh, subject to everything. You come in and set the culture. You come in and set the temperature. You come in on fire. You come in having learned something. You come on to be a blessing, to inspire people. And I tell you, enough people do that, everything will be lifted. And I tell you, it'll be awesome. So you choose that. You make those choices. And remember, God's on your side. I say it every week, but it always needs to be said. If God is for you, who can be against you? And God is for you. God's on your side. God wants you to win. God wants you to be a champion and start to make those choices today. And you'll walk in victory every day of your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Awesome. Thank you for tuning in. Love you. Bless you. Thank you for being with us.